The Torment of King Saul. Whatever our own tastes are, music has the ability to soothe and minister to us. It must go back to the first genealogical record where we saw Jubal was the father of all those who play the lyre and the pipe, Genesis 4.21. We learn several unsettling things about Saul after Samuel anoints David with oil, suggesting that God has selected him as the next king of Israel to follow Saul. Samuel was instructed to anoint David. After Samuel anoints David with oil, indicating that God has chosen him as the next king of Israel to succeed Saul, we read some disquieting things about Saul. Now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord terrorized him. Saul's servants then said to him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God is terrorizing you. 1 Samuel 16, 14-15 we shouldn't be surprised to learn that the Spirit of God left Saul at this critical time in his life, leaving a vacuum into which God sent an evil spirit to torment him. We have no idea why. What seems most probable is that God was disgusted with Saul. It was as if he were saying, I will punish you for presuming on your office as a king and walking against my will. You have not taken me seriously. You will learn to do that, Saul. I'm jealous for my name. So he left Saul and allowed an evil spirit to terrorize him. The Hebrew word for this is bathe, which means to fall upon, startle, overwhelm. Job uses it in his misery to curse the day of his birth. Let the blackness of the day terrify, same word, bathe, it, the day of his birth. Job 3, 5. Let the blackness of my days overwhelm the day of my birth, he says. Or, as we might say, oh, that I hadn't been born. This is what two reputable Old Testament scholars, Kiel and Delich, say about the evil spirit that came upon Saul. The evil spirit from Jehovah, which came into Saul in the place of the spirit of Jehovah, was not merely an inward feeling of depression at the rejection announced to him, which grew into melancholy and occasionally broke out in passing fits of insanity, but a higher evil power which took possession of him, and not only deprived him of his peace of mind, but stirred up the feelings, ideas, imaginations, and thoughts of his soul to such an extent that at times it drove him even into madness. The demon is called an evil spirit, coming from Jehovah, because Jehovah had sent it as punishment. That was Saul's ailment, and it was so obvious to those around him that his servant boldly recommended let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man, who is a cunning player on a harp, and it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. 1 Samuel 16, 16-17 the earliest archaeological records, carvings, and inscriptions show that the ancients thought music soothed passions, healed mental diseases, and even kept riots and tumults in check. It's fascinating to see how God uses this belief to provide the missing piece that connects David to Saul and the throne. Someone hears that Saul is depressed and wants someone to provide him with soothing music, and he knows a guy who knows David, and he says, I know a guy who can do that. God never runs out of creative ways to carry out his sovereign plan. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a calmly person, and the Lord is with him. 1 Samuel 16, 18 That isn't a bad resume, is it? He is a skilled musician, a man of valor, a warrior, he has command of his tongue, he is attractive, and the Lord is with him. One thing this teaches me is that you should never dismiss anything from your past. God has the ability to pick it up and use it in the most incredible ways. You never know when an event from years ago will open a door of opportunity in the future. This is exactly what happened to David. He was out in the Judean fields plucking away on his harp. He never even met Saul, and yet he's destined to be Saul's replacement. That's right, so God devises a method to bring them together. Music. 
Soon after, David receives a message saying Saul wants to see you. It's impossible to believe how everything comes together. It is amazing how God weaves his will together without our assistance. 1 Samuel 16, 19-20 So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the flock. Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread and a jug of wine and a young goat, and sent them to Saul by David his son. Despite the fact that Samuel had anointed David earlier, Jesse allowed him to return with the sheep. And now a sprinter from the king arrives, saying, Saul wishes to see your youngest son. So Jesse releases David, but not before loading him up with gifts for the king. David now trudges along with a donkey carrying bread, a jug of wine, and a goat, as well as his stringed instrument slung over his shoulder. David's Unique Ability David had no idea, but he was about to enter boot camp on his way to becoming king. That is how God's plan works. You may believe that a skill you learned or used years ago has been lost, or that you've squandered all of your time doing such and such, but don't believe it. God can take what appears to be an insignificant part of your past and place you in the exact right place to use that particular gift or skill. That was the case with David. He never said to Saul, I'm going to take your place, pal. He never once acted like a jerk in front of Saul. He never felt jealous or envious of the king's position. He wasn't arrogant. He'd been anointed, but he let the Lord open every door for him. Keep in mind that David was a man after God's own heart. He came to Saul and attended him. He said, Saul had no idea who David was when he walked into the king's presence. This young man standing in front of him with a musical instrument slung over his shoulder. Saul's successor was standing right in front of him, and the king had no idea. David made no mention of it. He came for one reason, to help the king in his time of need. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor-bearer. 1 Samuel 16, 21 Why did Saul love David? Because And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. 1 Samuel 16, 23 Isn't that lovely? Saul was on his cot or pacing his bedchamber, writhing in the madness of his depression and David sat in the corner playing his harp and perhaps singing one of his psalms. Who knows, maybe they started singing to each other after a while. Perhaps he taught some of his songs to Saul. We are not informed, but through David's presence combined with his soothing music, Saul grew to love that young man because he provided him with relief. Deliverance from depression became a reality thanks to David's unique ability. King Saul then says, let David now stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. 1 Samuel 16, 22. What a powerful statement. The young shepherd was first invited to the king's private tent, and then he won the king's heart. Now the king tells the father, let your son stay. Oh, he's very effective. He's got it under control. This was the power of David's music. Music's effective ministry. David's music was powerful. It revived Saul. David would take the harp and play it with his hand, and Saul would be refreshed. 1 Samuel 16, 23. The Berkeley version says, it eased Saul. The Hebrew word for refreshed and eased is ravak, which means to be wide, to be spacious, to give space so as to bring relief. Moffat translates it, he played for Saul until Saul breathed freely. Moffat translates, God had a plan for this young man, whose music would not only fill the heart of a depressed king overwhelmed by darkness, but would also someday fill his written word. Thus, David bravely walked into that dark place where Saul was living with his primitive stringed instrument. Saul was willing to give anything a shot. By the time David left him, Saul was relieved. The evil spirit had vanished. God used the gift of music to transport David into the king's chamber, and the king not only found solace from his torment, but he also found love in his heart for the young shepherd boy whose music touched his soul. There was music long before there was man or the voice of mankind on the earth. Did you know that? 
According to Job, the morning star sang together. That means the angelic host had voices and sang to God. It must have been some kind of harmony. Also, when we gather around the throne in the future, our best expression will be in song. We will sing unto Him, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Our voices are frequently involved in the reading of Scripture, but we rarely sing Scripture to our God. It's easy to forget that all of this is a part of the evolution of our worship of God. The Spirit-filled saint is a song-filled saint, and your melody is broadcast right into heaven. Live, where God's antenna is always receptive, where the soothing strains of your song are always appreciated. Regardless of how lovely or pitiful you sound, Sing loudly enough to drown out the defeating thoughts that normally compete for your attention. Get out of that cage of introspective reluctance. Sing up, sing up. You're not auditioning for the church choir. You're making music to the Lord your God with your heart. If you listen carefully after you've finished, you might hear the hosts of heaven responding with joy. David provided soft music for Saul, who had a hard heart. That is the soul music provided by Christ the Savior, and it is where we must all begin. He gave His life for us. He rose from the dead to give us the desire and power to live a positive, fulfilling life free of human depression and despair. He is our shepherd, and we are His sheep, in need of His voice's music. We can all celebrate and rejoice in God. However, there came a time for David to use his sling for victory. To watch the defeat of Goliath in the hands of David, click here.